Imagine waking up tomorrow and nothing works. Your phone is dead. Your car won't start. The power is out. And it's not coming back. Not for months. Maybe not for years. This is the nightmare scenario of an EMP attack over America. But here's the question nobody's answering honestly. What would really happen? Today, we're cutting through the Hollywood myths and doomsday hype to look at the actual science. Because the truth? It's complicated. And it might not be what you think. Let's start with the basics. An EMP, or electromagnetic pulse, is a burst of electromagnetic radiation that can damage or destroy electronic equipment. The scenario we're talking about is a high-altitude nuclear detonation. A single warhead exploded hundreds of miles above the middle of the United States. When that bomb goes off, it releases gamma rays that interact with the atmosphere, creating an intense electromagnetic wave that spreads across the entire continent in microseconds. This isn't theoretical. We've known about this effect since the 1960s when the US conducted high-altitude nuclear tests. We saw streetlights blow out in Hawaii from a test conducted 900 miles away. But here's where things get murky. How much damage would a modern EMP attack actually cause? Let's bust the first myth right now. Not everything would instantly die. According to current assessments, a nuclear weapon detonated hundreds of miles up would emit gamma rays creating an intense EMP energy wave. This wave can couple to power lines, electronic systems, and communications infrastructure, producing massive voltage spikes that destroy unprotected equipment. Some modeling suggests a high-altitude detonation 25 miles above North America could destroy most US electronics, high-voltage transformers and vehicles. But here's the critical detail most people miss. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or the CISA, has assessed that EMP attacks from an adversary with basic nuclear weapons may be disruptive on a regional scale, but are unlikely to cause catastrophic damage to the entire US electric grid. Why is this? Because the effects depend heavily on several factors, the sophistication of the weapon design, the exact altitude and location of detonation, the yield of the warhead, weather conditions, and what protective measures are already in place. Some electronics would survive, some would be damaged but repairable, others would be completely fried. It's not a binary all-or-nothing scenario. Your car? Maybe. Modern vehicles have more electronics but they're also somewhat shielded by their metal bodies. Older vehicles with simpler electronics might fare better. Your phone? Probably damaged if it's connected to power or in use. May be okay if it's off and not plugged in. The real catastrophe isn't your personal electronics. It's what happens to the power grid. This is where, honestly, an EMP attack goes from inconvenient to potentially catastrophic. An EMP has three components, but the third component, called E3, is the killer. E3 can simultaneously damage or destroy bulk power system transformers over a massive geographic area. Now, why is this such a nightmare scenario? Each extra high voltage transformer, these massive pieces of equipment that step down electricity for transmission across the grid, must be custom made for its unique role. They're not interchangeable. They're not sitting on shelves somewhere. Each one takes about 18 months to manufacture. The total worldwide production capacity, it's only about 100 units per year, and replacing just one requires five to 16 months assuming you still have functioning fuel infrastructure and transportation networks to move these multi-ton transformers. If dozens or even hundreds of these transformers are destroyed simultaneously, you're looking at a cascading failure of the entire electrical system. But here's where expert opinions diverge dramatically. Some modeling has found that E3 could lead to regional blackouts affecting multiple states because of transformer core saturation and supply demand imbalances, but wouldn't necessarily cause widespread physical damage to the transformers themselves. Other experts warn that large numbers of destroyed transformers could plunge the United States into a protracted blackout lasting years. The honest answer? We don't know for certain because we've never experienced this scenario in the modern grid environment. So how long would it take to get the lights back on? Lloyds of London did modelling on extreme space weather storms, 
which produced similar effects to the E3 component of an EMP, and predicted events could affect 20 to 40 million people in the United States, causing up to $2.6 trillion in damages, with recovery taking up to two years. That's for a natural event affecting a region, not a coordinated attack on the entire grid. For a full-scale EMP attack with significant transformer damage, estimates range from months to years depending on the extent of destruction. So, what's the best case scenario? Well, in that situation we'd see regional recovery in just a few months and maybe full restoration in a couple of years. But yeah, that's only possible if some key things go right, like some infrastructure needs to survive, manufacturing capacity has to still exist, transportation networks must be restorable, there needs to be an organized government response, and, honestly, social order has to be maintained. Now, how about a worst-case scenario? In that case, it could take years for full national recovery, especially if major transformers across multiple regions are completely destroyed. Some assessments even warn about a protracted blackout that could last indefinitely in certain areas. And you know, the recovery timeline isn't just about fixing broken equipment. It's also about maintaining the industrial capacity to actually manufacture replacements, all while your industrial base has no power. It's about keeping supply chains running when trucks have no fuel and refineries can't operate. It's about preventing the collapse of, well, pretty much everything that depends on electricity. Which, honestly, brings us to the question nobody wants to answer. So, how many people would die? This is where you'll find the most dramatic, and honestly the most disputed, projections. Some estimates, mainly from the 2008 Congressional EMP Commission report, suggest that within one year after a large-scale EMP attack, between two-thirds and 90% of the US population could die from starvation, lack of water, and social disruption. That's like 200 to 300 million Americans dead within 12 months. These catastrophic projections assume things like a complete collapse of the water infrastructure, both the delivery of clean water and the treatment of sewage, which could cause outbreaks of diseases like cholera. It also assumes a total breakdown of food supply chains, collapse of the medical system, and a complete failure of social order and government function. But, you know, more recent assessments challenge these numbers. The Economist recently estimated that around 7 million Americans would die in six months after a major EMP attack. That's roughly 2% of the population, still catastrophic, but, well, nowhere near 90%. Here's what we know for certain. An EMP itself wouldn't directly kill anyone. There's no blast, no radiation fallout. The deaths would come entirely from secondary effects. People who are dependent on medical equipment would be the first casualties. Those on ventilators, dialysis, or who need refrigerated medications like insulin. Within days, the lack of clean water and proper sanitation would start creating serious disease risks. Within weeks, food shortages would become critical. And within months, the breakdown of medical care, combined with malnutrition and disease, would cause deaths to really start mounting. The actual death toll would depend entirely on a few key things. How much infrastructure is damaged, how quickly some power can be restored to critical facilities, whether water treatment plants can be brought back online if food distribution networks can be improvised and whether social order is maintained or, you know, collapses. The truth nobody really wants to admit. We genuinely don't know. The 90% figure is likely overblown, based on worst-case assumptions stacked on top of more worst-case assumptions. But even the more conservative estimates suggest millions of casualties. So, what's the bottom line on an EMP attack over America? First, not everything would instantly stop working. The effects would be mixed, with some systems surviving, some damaged, and some destroyed. Second, the real crisis would be the electrical grid, specifically those high-voltage transformers that can't be quickly replaced. This is where a regional disruption could, honestly, become a national catastrophe. Third, recovery would take months at minimum, potentially years in the worst-case scenarios. The timeline depends heavily on how much damage actually occurs and whether we can maintain industrial capacity during recovery. Fourth, Death tolls are highly speculative, ranging from millions to hundreds of millions depending on assumptions. The honest answer is, we just don't know, but it would be the cascading failures, water, food, medicine, 
not the EMP itself, that would be deadly. The most important takeaway. An EMP attack would not be an instant apocalypse where everyone drops dead and every electronic device simultaneously explodes. It would be a complex cascading disaster where, honestly, some regions are devastated while others are merely disrupted, where some systems fail while others limp along, and where the real battle is against time to restore critical infrastructure before secondary effects become catastrophic. Is it a serious threat worth preparing for? Absolutely. Is it the guaranteed extinction-level event some people claim? The evidence just doesn't support that conclusion. Understanding the real risks, not the Hollywood version, is the first step to real preparedness. If you found this information valuable, hit that subscribe button for more honest analysis on emergency preparedness and survival scenarios. Drop a comment below with your thoughts, and I'll see you in the next video.